Praise the Lord and welcome again to the state of the union, the union between Jesus and his bride, the church. And we are still about the business of the word of the Lord saying, tell my people to return to me. Not just that, but in this immediate case today, as has been for almost three weeks now, tell my people to return to the practice of my word. Tell my people to return to the practice of my word. You know, when Jesus said, and at that, repeatedly so. When Jesus said, follow me. Yes, it could and should be immediately understood as a call to his immediate hearers. He was simply calling them into discipleship, relationship. Follow me. Materially, physically follow me. Leave what you are doing and follow me. However, in the general or wider sense in the English language, follow me also means follow my example. It also means make me your reference point. It also means to do as I do. To do as I do. So Jesus said to his disciples just before he left the scene, go into all the world, disciple all nations, teaching them to obey the commandments as I have first taught you. So they were to follow Let's call it a procedure of sorts. They were to follow whatever Jesus had first taught them. They were to follow after the things or the manner of Jesus. Now, what is the manner of Jesus? Besides the specific issues of doctrine which he taught them, what was the manner of Jesus? He revealed it himself in so many ways and on several occasions. He said, for example, in John chapter 15, verse 15, he said, I no longer call you servants because the servant does not know what his master is up to or what his master is doing. The servant does not know the master's business, save that which is given to him to do. He said, but I have revealed to you all that my father taught me, so I now call you friends. In other words, what Jesus was asking them to teach other people were the things, not just that he had first taught them, but the things which he had first received from the father. He said, I have given to you what I have first received of my father. Then in John chapter 17, he categorically states, I think in verse 4, in his famous prayer, he says, I have given them your word, and they have believed or received them. So Jesus says he has given them the word of God, the word which he had first received of the father. The same, he was now asking them to go teach other people. So Jesus, in this, lays out the precedent, the procedure, the formula, the protocol. Do as I do. And how did he do? He first got whatever from the Father. Now, more specifically, now that, that is 
that is, as it were, an explanation of the idea. But it is actually more specific than that. Because I've laid it out in general terms, even if I was quoting the scripture. So Jesus said, for example, in John 15, 19, well, the scripture says, quoting Jesus, he said, then answered Jesus, John, 14, John 5, 19, he said, then answered Jesus and said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. And then in verse 20 he says, For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that himself does, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. So the MO of Jesus was to follow whatever he saw the Father do, or whatever the Father first gave him. Then continuing in verse 30 of John 5, it says, I can, still quoting Jesus, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. He is simply repeating the same thing. I don't do anything of myself. As I have received from the Father, as I have heard from the Father, I make decisions or, or judgments or declarations or I render an opinion. And my opinion or my judgment is in right standing with God because I don't seek my own will but the will of the Father which had sent me. Then he went on in John chapter 8 from first of all verse 26. He says, I have many things to say and to judge of you but he that sent me is true I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him so wherever you see that Jesus is being quoted understand that he's simply repeating or speaking after that which he first heard from the father then he continued in verse 28 of John chapter 8. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as the Father hath taught me, I speak these things. Verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father had not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Jesus is telling us something. But he didn't stop there. In John chapter 14, verse 10, he continues, Believest, not, believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he doeth the works. Now Jesus has laid it out. He has laid it out. Everything recorded in scripture concerning what Jesus did or what he said, he is telling us he got from the Father. Now the same Jesus said, follow me. The same Jesus said, follow me. In telling those guys to follow him, he said again in John chapter 17, in that his famous prayer, he said, I do not pray for only these ones, but I pray for those who will come to believe through their preaching. So if he is sending them out to repeat exactly what he had first taught them, and one of the things he taught them like he said in that commandment in Matthew 28 verse 19. 
19 and 20. Teach that which I first taught you, which I told you I first received from my father. So whatever those guys taught, Jesus is saying, I am praying for those who will hear what they taught and come to believe also. So if Jesus taught them that he first received from the Father and he is saying to them, go do as I first taught you, we can understand that the apostolic doctrine, the things that they taught, will be essentially this, that which Jesus had received from the Father, which he had taught them and which we are now being told if you are going to be a Jesus man then you must learn to do that which the Father first revealed to you today that is called being led by the Spirit of God now why do we bring these things up the word of the Lord came to me saying tell my people to return to me in the practice of my word. Let us come back to doing things based on what we have first received from the Father. Or if you like, from Jesus. If we are truly going to be his representatives, if we are truly going to be representations of him, two different words. We represent him and we represent him. We are representing him to the world in ourselves. But to do that, we must be in such constant touch with him that we are able to do only that which he has first revealed to us, like he stated with the first set of disciples. And to do that today, he said, when I get to the Father, I will pray him and send you the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, he will take off what is mine and reveal it to you. One, whatever he speaks to you, he will not speak of himself, but he will simply repeat that which he has first heard of me. So when we follow the Holy Spirit, we are essentially following Jesus. So when the Bible says, be led of the Spirit, when the Bible says, do not walk by sight, but walk by the Spirit, the Bible is telling us to, to walk like Jesus, who did and said only those things that his father had first taught him. And I asked, why are we talking about these things? So I asked a couple more questions. Who is responsible for the things which you say or which you do? Because if they are your words, you will have to back them up. You will have to do the works to back them up. But if it is the word of God that you have spoken, the Bible says, so shall my word not return to me void but it will accomplish that for which I spoke it. That means you will not have to do anything to bring the word of God to pass. All you have to do is say it. Just like Jesus did. Next question. Would you like to have the God type or Jesus type of experiences? The type of experiences in the Bible. The type of experiences all the way from Abraham to the last of the apostles, at least as recorded in the Bible. That caliber, that dimension of experience. Where you speak and it comes to pass. When you say be healed and the person is healed. When you say by this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow what you said will actually happen. Would you like to have those kind of experiences. I remember something that Bishop T. D. Jakes once said. I don't know if he was quoting another person, but I heard it from you. He said, if you have to open the door yourself, then you will have to keep it open yourself. 
But when God opens the door for you, then God will be the one keeping the door open for as long as it's necessary. Do you see Jesus in the Bible trying to open any door for himself? Do you see any of the apostles, any of the sages in the Bible trying to open any door for themselves? What are we doing? He says, tell my people to return to the practice of my work, which is doing only that which I have first revealed or spoken to them. Saying or doing only that which I have first given to them. Jesus said, I have given them your word. Can you say that Jesus has given you his word? Can you say that that which you do is based on the word that you have first received from Jesus? Because he said to his disciples, teach the word as I have first taught you, or according to the manner that I have first taught you. Now Jesus said that his experiences were based on the word of the Father which he had first received. And then he said, I speak to the world the things that I heard from my Father. And he spoke in word, he spoke mightily in word and in deeds. But he said, I speak to the world that which I first received of my father. He spoke many things just by the things which he did. And as scripture says, the whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the Jesus men and women, the sons of God. I must ask you, I must ask you, which one are you? What is your experience in these days? Or is it to you that the word is coming to return to the practice of the word of God? It is not a flippant place to be. It is a painstaking place. It is a place of should I say careful diligence if there was ever any such thing careful diligence it's, it's not something you stumble on it is something about which you have to be deliberate Jesus said as I hear I judge do you recognize what that means as I hear I judge means I know how to hear I know where to go to to hear I know who to go to to hear what I need to hear to be able to do what needs to be done. He say, as I hear, I judge. In other words, I don't judge until I have heard. I don't make conclusions, opinions, or decisions, or character judgments unless I have first heard from the Father. To hear from the Father implies that you know how to find the Father. You know how to locate the Father. Elijah said, as sure as the Lord God lives, there shall be no rain in Israel. No, sorry. He said, as sure as the Lord God lives, before whom I stand. Before whom I stand, there shall be no rain in Israel, except at my word. In other words, Elijah was saying to us, I have come into the habit of standing before God. So I know God's mind. Because in standing before him as a servant, as a practitioner of the presence of God, I know what God wants. Jesus said, I do always that which pleases God. Having first stayed or stood in his presence, to receive from him his mind. As I hear, I judge. Jesus was also a practitioner of the presence of God. Because to hear, you have to get before the speaker so that you can receive of him. He said, the things that I say to you, or the things you see me do, they are not mine. I don't make decisions based on how I think or how I feel. They are as my father first taught me. So when I say it is painstaking or it's a deliberate thing or, or something for which you need to do careful diligence, I am referring to the fact of the practice of the presence of God. You have to make a habit of standing before God, whether you are standing before scripture, or whether you are standing in the place of prayer, or whether you are just 
in the place of communion with the Holy Spirit. But you must become a practitioner of the presence of God because it is in such places that the word of the Lord can come to. You must become a practitioner. You must become so open and so in tune, so sensitive to the Holy Spirit that he can speak to you at any given moment. And you will know. He says, tell my people to return to my word. Where are you going to find his word? Which is why I asked, do you want the Jesus type of experience? This is before us today. He says, tell my people to return to my word. God does everything by his word. So Jesus understood this. He kept, now we know, if you read the scriptures, you see, Jesus had a habit of separating himself and going to the Father. What about you? When you separate yourself to go to the Father, what is it about? To pray about your needs. To pray about this or that which you have perceived concerning your circumstance, environment, or this world of ours. How about getting in front of God and keeping quiet? In spite of all the things happening around you, you get in front of him and you keep quiet as of being in the presence of a king. And you honor his presence by keeping quiet, deferring to him so that he can speak. Because when you get in there and you are full of your own needs, you are going to do all the talking and you will not hear what he has to say. And most times, after you are done and you feel, you feel free, you, are, you feel empty because you have, you have exhausted all that you want to say, you leave. And you never get to hear from him. He says, tell my people to return to the practice of my word. To return to his presence to get used to staying at his feet, quiet, so he can speak. He say, as I hear, I judge. You can't hear and hear properly when you are talking. You can't hear and hear properly when you are busy thinking your own thoughts. Many people think or make a show of listening, but really they are listening so that you can keep quiet and then let them talk their own. So they're not really listening to you. They're politely waiting for you to finish so that they can say the one on their mind. And then, as I'm sure you would have noticed, when they start to talk, they start to talk about things you just spoke about. Clearly, they didn't hear what you said. We all must become practitioners of the presence of God. Or of the presence of God. Not just that. We must become avid listeners. To listen so that we can hear his word. Even when you are reading, even when you are reading the scriptures, you listen for him. Perhaps he will speak to you from the scriptures. I read the Bible and I constantly feel as if the Holy Spirit is inside the book, as if he's hiding somewhere in the pages. Because as I read the, 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 the written word, he begins to read it to me. And that which is supposed to be mine for the day, he speaks it to me, and I know he just spoke to me. What is your experience in these things? Because these things are supposed to govern our experience. And the Bible says, the world is waiting for our showing. Not just our showing for our sake, for our sake, but our showing so we show the world Jesus. So that we show Jesus to the world. It is Jesus who must be glorified. But for him to be glorified, we must come to the level from which he operated. And he didn't hide it. He said it to the disciples. As I have first taught you. And herein ended my talk for today. Not just because the time is up, but because I don't want to begin to repeat myself. God says to tell you to return to the practice of his word. So that the experiences that he has designed to show the world through you can begin to happen. God bless you as you meditate on these things. But we will be back same time tomorrow.
see you there.